feathers hit, they strike the bell that wakes a newborn when he's sleeping well. The mirrors miss, they half resist as they go by, they say something that sounds like it rhymes. In the end, there is a middle intermissions over, can't you tell? It's now something else Take a different breath This could make some sense Mouth the words that can't be spoken Direct, innocent, inexistent Nothing here but smoke In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate a quick technique of uh, creating a kind of glossy uh, glass look to a button or a shape. Um, it works better for some shapes than others, but we'll give it a shot here with a couple different shapes. Uh, first of all, we'll try a simple rectangle. Drag that rectangle out, nice rounded rectangle. Um, make sure it's full opacity, and uh, we'll pick, say, blue uh, for the color. Now what I'm going to do is uh, create a gradient on this shape, and I want the gradient to be kind of a blue and then a dark, dark blue or black almost, and then back up to a blue. So the way I'll do that is, first of all, um, with the object selected, I'll click Linear Gradient, which uh, by default gives us a, a full opacity to no opacity at the end. Uh, what I'll do is then um, edit this gradient. So you can see I click the Edit button, brings up the Gradient Editor. I will, first of all, choose the Transparent End Stop, change it to full opacity, probably make it a little bit darker, okay, and then I'm going to hit add stop, which will create a third stop now in the middle, this middle stop, I'll select that and I'll drag it on that same line down, very dark, and I'll also change the offset to something like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, something like that, and now I will click the, um, sorry, I will double click that object and move the grip so that the gradient kind of goes up and down on the object vertically. And there's the first step. I've got an object with that kind of three stage gradient. Now I'm going to select that object, create a duplicate, and in order to show you a little clearer what I'm doing, that duplicate I'm going to turn it into a flat color again. We'll pick something completely different, say orange. I'm going to change this to white after. but um, So we've got our duplicate rectangle right on top of it. Select the Bezier tool. And now what I'm going to do is create a kind of curved shape. Uh, this upper part's not that important, but what I want to do is take that shape, drag it down a little bit so it intersects, and I'm going to create an object out of the intersection of these two. So I've got my one shape selected. Hold Shift, select the orange rectangle, and go to Path, Intersection. Now I've got my kind of highlight shape. It's going to be my highlight shape. And now what I do is select the object, and I'm going to create it, turn it into a path, and double click it so I see my grips. And now I'm going to go Path, Dynamic Offset, and I'm going to grab that one remaining grip, and I'm going to drag it fairly small here, Okay, which I'll explain in a second. Now I have to take this resulting object and I will turn it again into a path. Double click it and make sure you can see the grip so you know it's a path. And again, dynamic offset. And this time I'm going to drag it out. Okay, and The reason I drag it in and out like that is to kind of round this corner and the one on the opposite side. Uh, it's hard to round those uh, without doing that step. And now I have my kind of highlight shape. While it's selected, I'll make the color white, and I will select, again, the gradient uh, tool, and I will just drag from top to bottom, like that, and I get my nice shiny button. And that dark highlight kind of adds a bit of depth to the button. So that's one example. Now what I'll do is show you fairly quickly. I won't demonstrate all the steps again, but um, you can do this with other shapes. And like I say, it works well for some. I'll delete, prime, pick a color. Um, that you can see, uh, like this object. Let's try and 
shrink it a little bit. Now I can take this object and do exactly the same thing. First of all, we'll do this one in red. Pick some nice bright red color. And again, I need the gradient here. I'll edit the gradient. Make the end stop fully opaque, a little bit darker. And I will add a stop in the middle. Edit that stop to almost black. Change the offset to something like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And I will hit, double click that, and I will move it to get my shape. Something like this. Duplicate the object. Make it a flat color. But you can see, create the Bezier shape that we want. Pull that down, and I will do hold shift and again do an intersection. Make it white. Turn that into a path. Again, do a dynamic offset of the shape. Turn that into a path. Again, do the dynamic offset. Bring it back out nice and rounded. While it's selected, I will hit the gradient tool and do that. Okay, so there you've got another nice kind of plasticky uh, rectangle. One other thing I can do is um, create a shape behind it if I wanted to. A black circle. Try that. And duplicate it. Make a white circle. Kind of give it a shade. Cross kind of like a 3D black button. And I'll send both these shapes to the back and you can see you can get kind of neat effects uh, for that plastic button. Uh, hopefully uh, you get some use out of it. Um, you can use it on a variety of shapes. Like I say, it works well for some, um, not so well with others, but give it a